Hello Zwifters, welcome to this episode of How to Run on Zwift, in which we delve into the very mysterious world of Zwift race timings. So many of you will have done the Zwift half marathon uh, last weekend, it's now March the 1st, so you've had time to recover, but have you actually looked at your race results um, in Zwift or on Strava? Because you might notice some very odd things. So here we are, let's start with my particular race result. If I click on this button here, I'm taken to my race result, which you can see is 89 minutes, 36.5 seconds. Now let's round that up to uh, 37 seconds. So it's actually one hour, 29 minutes and 37 seconds. That is my time for 21.1 kilometers, a half marathon on Zwift the other day. That's all fine. But then we click on this button and it shows me crossing the line in a time of one hour, 29 minutes and 20 seconds. You can see it there on the screen. Where has that other 17 seconds come from in my race result, which appears literally moments after I cross the line, it flashes up on the screen, one hour, 29 minutes, 37 seconds. Seems a bit strange, doesn't it? Until we look at the beginning of the race. Now, many of you will have noticed at the beginning of the race, you start running and there's a little section that you run in which has become known as no man's land because the timer and the distance markers do not start clocking up for a little while and then they start clocking up. This is a bit weird. Let's just have a look at a video. So what I've done here is I've recorded a video where I've timed how long it takes from when you start running to when the clock starts in Zwift. So you watch this. So here we go there, three, two, one. We start running now. My timer starts going. So we're off and running. We, we think we're running the half marathon now. 10 seconds. Still no timer, still no distance, look up there. But now we come to this banner here, 17 seconds, and there we go, the timer and the distance start moving. So it's taken 17 seconds of running before we get the timer and the distance marker to start. 17 seconds, that's a bit strange, isn't it? 17 seconds. Oh, if we add 17 seconds to one hour, 29 minutes and 20 seconds, look what we get. One hour, 29 minutes and 37 seconds. So why is that? The other thing to look at, check this out. We go back to this screen here and you'll notice a half marathon is actually 21.1 kilometers. Well, technically it's 21.9 eight kilometers, I think, 21.98, but let's round it up to 21.1. You'll notice as I cross the line here, I haven't run 21.1 kilometers. I've run 21.06 kilometers. Why is that? So let's dig in a little bit further. This is getting very geeky, isn't it? But I love it all. So, so let's go and have a look at my Strava distance and time. So Strava tells us that, ignore, no, just ignore the time. I'll come to that in a minute. Ignore the time that Strava has given me, right? Look at the distance. So the distance is 21.13 kilometers. 21.13 kilometers. Now you remember here, we have 21.06 kilometers. So a difference of 0 0.07 of a kilometer, 70 meters, 70 meters. Now guess what? It just so happens that at 14 kilometers an hour, which is the pace that I started the race, it takes about 17 seconds to run 70 meters. 17 seconds to run 70 meters. So essentially what we're saying here is that the race and the timing of the race and the distance of the race started then. It started when we started running. So what is this gap? It's ridiculous. Why, why does Zwift have this gap when they don't start the, the timing and they don't start the distance clocks until we go under this banner here? I've no idea because 
it's clear from the race result and from looking at Strava that actually the race did start. The timing and the distance did start when we started running. I don't understand it. Can anybody please explain it to me? No, you can't, can you? You can't explain it. OK, there's more, though. There is more. Right. Now, if we go back to Strava, you'll see my time is actually 1 hour 29 minutes 47 seconds. An extra 10 seconds on top of my time that I thought I'd done. So we can explain that if we look at my stats for the end of the race. You see here that my fastest kilometre was right at the end of the race, uh, 3 minutes 47 seconds for the final kilometre. That takes us from kilometre 20 to kilometre 21. But then you can see right at the end of the race is a tiny little section which is very, very slow indeed. And the way we explain that is because when you cross the finish line, you press stop on the treadmill, it does take a little while for the treadmill to slow down. So you are technically still moving on the treadmill and Strava is counting that. And if I look on my video of the race, I can see that the timer in Zwift doesn't actually stop until it says one hour, 29 minutes and 47 seconds. So that explains those 10 seconds. Seconds. There's one final thing. If we press on this button here, this is my Zwift dashboard. And the Zwift dashboard for the half marathon on the 24th of February says that my time was 1 hour 45 minutes. Well, that's clearly ridiculous. 1 hour 45 minutes is the time from when I stood on the start line to the time I crossed the finish line. And that may be, well, it clearly was about eight minutes before the race started. So I'm pretty sure, I don't know for absolute certainty, but I'm pretty sure that what that is, is when you log in and you jump onto the start line of the race, the Zwift dashboard starts the timer from then. It starts timing your entire activity time, not your race time. And that's that. Gosh, that was tiring. So if you've ever wondered what's going on with your race timings on Zwift, then that's a little explanation of what I think is going on. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again for another How to Run on Zwift very soon. Please do subscribe to the Film My Run YouTube channel if you have a chance. And if you've got any comments, any questions, please do leave them down below. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.